Hi guys, welcome to a video and in today's video I just wanted to do a sapphic deep dive into the album Evermore by Taylor Swift. I think this is possibly my new favourite album of hers. At first I didn't think it was as good as Folklore but after listening to it quite a lot I think this is possibly the best album she's ever released. And I wanted to do a sapphic deep dive of this album because I think there is quite a lot to be explored through a sapphic lens. As always, this video is just for fun and speculation. All theories are welcome, but some of it just do be gay. Applying queer theory to Taylor Swift's music could literally be a university module. Lyrically Evermore is definitely one of my favourite albums of hers and there's a lot of sapphic themes to be explored. Also I'm aware Taylor has said that a lot of the songs on both Folklore and Evermore are kind of inspired by other people's stories and myths and so on so we do need to take that into consideration when deconstructing her lyrics but I also think releasing songs under the guise that their fictional stories and myth gives her a chance to perhaps speak more freely about things that she may not ever actually speak about in real life. And part of the fun of both Folklore and Evermore is you don't know what's fiction and you don't know what's fact, so it's just fun to kind of deconstruct anyway. So let's start with Gold Rush. So Gold Rush is pronoun free and most notably it's also a Carly Kloss caption on Instagram. Of course that could be a coincidence but it seems to be just another coincidence in a long line of coincidences. From what I gather the song is about wanting somebody that absolutely everybody else wants and she's so tempted to kind of just jump in and get lost in this person. And this song seems like it's being sung about a woman because if we look at the lyrics what must it be like to grow up that beautiful with your hair falling into place like dominoes? It's something that's usually attributed to women. I'm not saying it couldn't be about a guy, but I think when you piece it all together, it does very much sound like it's about a woman, if not a particular woman. And the coastal town we wandered around sounds reminiscent of Big Sur. Now we know that Carly and Taylor went to Big Sur, Diana also went to Big Sur, so I don't know if she was possibly there with Taylor, but Coastal Town kind of links to that. Again, could just be another coincidence, but when you piece it all together, it kind of does build a bit of a picture. And the whole, I can't dare to dream about you anymore, and my mind turns your life into folklore. I feel like there would be obvious reasons that Taylor couldn't speak about certain romances in her life, but if you're speaking about them under the guise of myth and of story, nobody can ever really be sure about it 100%. And that's what I love about these albums so much. The second song is Tolerated. It. Now there's been a lot of kind of speculation that this song is about Princess Diana and her relationship with Prince Charles, which I can see in the song lyrics. I can buy this. I do think there's a few interpretations of this song as far as lyrics go. I know my love should be celebrated, but you tolerate it. That line just seems intrinsically linked to gay relationships. So one theory about this song is she's singing to her father or perhaps an older male that she knows and and she's saying that her love should be celebrated but it's merely just tolerated so I think there's room for both interpretations. I can see how it fits with Princess Diana and Charles and I can also see how it fits with kind of singing to a father or a father type figure about your love which you think should be celebrated but that person's merely tolerating it because they don't approve of it. Next we have Dorothea. I personally think this song may be about Carly, we'll get to that in a bit. I also appreciate this song could be about a friendship. There is some kind of sapphic inclinations. It's the from you I'd buy anything for me, that's kind of what pushes it into a more sapphic realm as opposed to just a friendship. So the reason I think that this song is possibly linked to Carly is because of the lyrics, if you ever get tired for being known for who you know, Carly is more or less known for her relationship to Taylor. I'm not saying she's not known at all outside of that. She's obviously, you know, a fairly big name in the fashion world, but I think if we're talking mainstream, people really do know her because of Taylor. So 
So again, those lyrics fit. The whole selling makeup and magazines thing, again, fits in with Carly quite well. So this song could be longing over a lost friendship. It just does have a very sapphic tinge to it. The next song is Ivy. Now this song has a lot of speculation around it. I've read that the song is about being in love with someone who is deceased, having an affair with a ghost. It's about two women having an affair. It's, I've read all kinds of things about this. The only pronouns in Ivy kind of pertain to the fact that whoever's perspective Taylor is singing from has a husband. And at first I was like, this does really sound like two women having an affair, but then also when you take a closer look at the lyrics, it also does sound like she's having an affair with somebody who's passed away or something similar to that. So my pain fits in the palm of your freezing hand, taking mine, but it's promised to another. A freezing hand kind of alludes to a dead hand. When people die, they obviously go very cold, all the warmth leaves their body, and the person is taking her hand, but of course she's married. He's in the room, your opal eyes are all I wish to see. He wants what's only yours. Again, I just feel like this song has a sapphic tinge to it, and of course, the gender of the person she's talking about having the affair with is not mentioned in the song, which leaves it as an open debate. You know, the mentions of widows and stones and grieving also allude to death in this song. So this song's quite an interesting one. I think it's my favourite off the album. Some people have also said this song relates to Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Again, it just feels gay. I know that's not like evidence, but to me it just, it, I'm, I just, um, next is Cowboy Like Me. Oh, there is just so much to unpack in this song. The song to me is very much about money and it's about love, it's about swindling people for their money. And the old men that I've swindled really did believe I was the one. I think I know who she's referring to with that line but I don't want to say it. Anyway, the person whose perspective she's singing from is having a romance with another hustler. Now of course the other gold digger could be a guy but again kind of just points to it being a woman. Also the line, now you hang from my lips. Taylor is quite tall and to hang from her lips seems like she's alluding to somebody a bit shorter than her. Again, it's just something that maybe points to it being a woman and the whole takes one to no one. Just echoes of gayness through this song. I mean, she has been romantically involved with people who are a little bit shorter than her, like, I don't know, um, let's just uh, pick a random name out of the hat and say Diana Agron. Oh, I'm glad you brought Diana Agron up actually, because in the lyric video to this song, the clock in the lyric video is set to 4.30. And uh, 4.30 is the date of Diana's birthday. Probably just a coincidence. Also, Diana once tweeted about dancing in the kitchen with Taylor and we know her and Taylor used to hang out a lot and presumably dance a lot from what we know. And the lyrics, you asked me to dance, but I said dancing is a dangerous game. Again, kind of fit in with this narrative that this song may be about Diana. Also, I kind of feel like a lot of people probably have fallen head over heels for both Taylor and Diana. They're both incredibly gorgeous, so I don't blame them for both breaking a lot of hearts. The song really just fits with them quite perfectly. And speaking of Diana, that brings me to the song Evermore. What's significant about Evermore is Taylor did a duet on the song with Bon Iver. So we know Diana is a fan of Bon Iver and Taylor did a duet with him on her song Evermore. And there's also been speculation that Evermore is linked to Emily Dickinson's poetry and what's significant about Emily Dickinson is her sapphic work and the kind of speculation around her own sapphic relationships. Again, it's just speculation, but it's there nonetheless. The line that sticks out for me in Evermore is letters addressed to the fire. Whoever Taylor's hung up on, she seems to be really, really, really hung up on. Because whilst I know myth and folklore play into Evermore, I think there's quite a clear thread of Taylor's own feelings in the album as well. 
personally. And lastly, I'm going to talk about champagne problems. I'm not, you know, 100% on this one. I don't think it's necessarily overtly sapphic, but there's a couple of things that I think are worth talking about. It sounds to me like it's about breaking somebody's heart, possibly after a marriage proposal, but saying to the person, you'll find somebody else and you'll forget about me. And again, we don't know the gender of the person that she's talking about. However, there's just one line in this song which struck me as a possible clue and that's your Midas touch on the Chevy door. Now we all know the myth of King Midas, everything he touched turned to gold. So she's talking about a gold Chevy door and she did a Vogue photo shoot with Carly and in the photo shoot it's a gold Chevy. So we know gold and Chevy has a link with Carly and that's threaded into the song. Again I think Champagne Problems is one of the weaker ones. There's not too much to deconstruct with Champagne Problems but as far as I can tell it may well be about um, a certain person and that's it. Okay guys I hope you enjoyed this sapphic deep dive into Evermore. Please feel free to put your own theories and speculations about Evermore in the comments. Maybe I've got some things really wrong, maybe I'm correct about certain things. Okay don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!